Hello, it's the evening of Tuesday, and I'm going to give this an attempt. I do intend, it is my intention to check in tomorrow, but um, I didn't do a live thing today. I thought I would, and then I just never did, and it just like, it's like yeah, okay, I'm not feeling it. I am and I'm not, you know, so I ended up not doing it. And um, I'll talk about music. I've been listening to music, but today was warm. Today was un unusually warm. It was up, up to 80 degrees here in Omaha. And um, I didn't do yard work, but I sat outside for a little while observed people. I observed a couple of my neighbors, uh, elderly, who were wearing masks um, out, outdoors doing stuff in their yard, and I still don't have one. I, you know, I um, made me think a little bit about it. It's, um, I didn't stay out very long. You know, I just have to say this about the situation. As I think about it and just look at the look at what's going on I don't know what's going I don't know the totality of what is going on here um, we never are told the truth and it's um, just as time goes on my suspicion that something about this is deliberate and um, God, it's some, but 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 at the same time, it's almost like somebody messed up. You know, it's like it's like it it's you know the response. Just let me just go. You know, I'm. It's the evening, so it's been a long day, and yeah, I'm I'm almost ready for bedtime. So I'm kind of on the low chill. But um, it's just kind of interesting just how this whole coronavirus thing has unfolded, is unfolding, and the ongoing, to me now, strange response to it, particularly from the United States. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like we are in the clutches of these... Uh, renegade um, uh, you know like con men who are like trying to personally gain from the situation I just see you know from on the top level no leadership you know the White House through it's like I don't know what the hell is going on, you know, and um, rather than saying it's causing me anxiety, it's just like it's just more the same, you know. It's like I've just to me, it's just ongoing. I keep selling people, and I've said this really, frankly, all my life. Maybe some people don't like hearing it. It's like just been watching just the entire house of cards, the way that the world is operating um, more and more madly focused on the bottom line of material gain and profit and how everything, I mean, to me, generations ago, in the 70s, when I was graduating from, as I was graduating from high school, you know, to my perception, it was starting then. It was like even as I was getting out of high school. Excuse me. The whole idea of going to college and all that. It was like, well, I got to do this. But it's like, it's like this is just coming apart. And it's like uh, half of what I'm told is supposed to be is, is a, just a big fat lie. Because it's only true for some people. And I'm not one of those people. To, and, to, and to my mind, we just... 
the the news, you know, the, the thing, the way that this this is unfolding, it's just more of the same. Whereas you just always are hoping for some beneficial, intelligent people to step up and say, "Okay, we got this. We're gonna try to steady the the uh, steady the wagon, you know, so that we can make it further down the road." And we've just still got these idiots. Um, you know, what do we find out about, you know, Frump's got, you know, financial interest in that one particular malaria-related uh, drug and um, all of the madness. Just, I can't even begin to, you know, identify all the different parts of the madness. You know, um, so we're going to get through this, you know, you know, whatever is going on for whatever reason, that's the other thing I'm trying to get out. It's like, my goodness, you know, if, there, if this was some, some sort of deliberate thing where someone was trying to gain further power to throw literally the entire nation, much less seemingly part of the world under the bus, you know, to threaten to destroy the American economy, to get the upper, upper hand is, you know, could that possibly be going on? I mean, you know, I, I don't know. It just, just, again, the response to this just really to me just is, <laughs> it's pathetic. And it just, that's why it causes me to say those those things out loud and um, something must be going on I mean it's like I'm not there in the hospitals and the morgues to see these this this influx of dead bodies and this what I'm what we're told is this you know this recent um, and ongoing um, Um, demand on the health system of certain um, cities and and uh, uh, countries even <sighs> hope that makes sense folks I just um, thought I'd come on and try to share my version of trying to offer some camaraderie and support I am a little buzzed and so I'm trying to say something you know before, as it escapes me that I think is just important to try to impart, you know, that I'm, you know, what's Derek's take on this whole big picture, you know. Um, I sincerely hope no one gets sick, you know. There is emerging evidence that the numbers are being played with, that there are deaths that are being assigned to the virus that may not really be, and it's like, well, what in the world good is this if that is happening and to me the whole idea that we're ne never being told the clear absolute truth from any corner of the world it just makes sense to me that this is you know there is some bullshit going on but it's but but why you know just you know that's that's what is flabbergasting you know as just a simple person, it's like, man, if I could just get my hands on some power, you know, it, you know, unless power is really that corrupting that once you get that power, it's like you forget everybody underneath you. It's like, well, fuck you I got this now. How do we keep this game going? Because that's what I keep seeing, you know, and every, let me just keep going. Tune out if you've had enough. In every election cycle, whether it's Dems or Repubs, and even around the world, because I I, 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 I I like to think of myself as a global citizen, every election cycle, it's the same false hope and the same lies, and people keep going for it. Well, maybe this time, maybe this time, and I'm saying, no, it ain't going to be this time. And sure enough, each time, no, nothing happens. Nothing really good happens. People's constituents get what they want, things happen that appear to be progress. Little steps, let's not, you know, I'm not belittling the fact that some many good things happen, 
but the overall picture here, which has led us to this coronavirus a pandemic situation, from my perspective, is what I'm talking about. You know, and just watching again, one more time, and I'll go on to show you what I'm playing. Watching how it's being played out through the international um, media that I can access through the computer. You know, like I say, not just the U.S. Um, you know, I could give you the list. I ought to call it up, you know, of all the, the news I watch from around the world. And just the way this is being handled, it's just, it's like something, something stinks. You know, somebody has shit in the uh, punch bowl. It's like something is, something's up here. And I hope we get through this. Someone, I got this in the mail today in a very, it was funny, you know, and the driver, it was an Amazon Amazon truck. I wasn't expecting anything. And it was in a big box, a big oversized box for this little CD. Um, I have the little thing. Thank you. Um, a watcher sent me this brand new Pure Reason Revolution uh, release, Eupnea. And I've already peeped it. And... Um, I'll, I'll give it some more go. Uh, I already know this band. Uh, I've had this since it came out. P this is an introduction to the band. Pure Reason Revolution. Um, there are shapes in this that that I like. The other thing that I must share with you, the person that sent this to me, that I hear right away how this is geared and it's they've rounded all the edges and they have geared this for airplay and for the American market I hear as well as hearing that this is you know these guys are good at these people are good at what they do they've shaped it you know this is a product uh, and it's definitely for a youth market um, the vocals are you know the part that is the hardest part for me to get to here thank you for sharing this with me pure reason revolution some of you young, young, younger folks because I do think that many of my viewers here, I'm understanding more now. Aren't you all my age? Are you my age? Some are younger. Some of you young folks might dig this Pure Reason Revolution. Um, another death before I forget it, because there are so many. Um, producer Hal Wilner died today, possibly related to Corona, possibly not. But this is something he did that I have. Weird Nightmare. Um, this is about Mingus. Um, Hell Winter presents Weird Nightmare Meditations on Mingus. And this has a very interesting cast of characters. Uh, if you don't know this, check this out. Very interesting. He's done some other things. Um, I don't have them, but I remember when they came out. One came to mind because Todd Rundgren, Rundgren was involved. Uh, another jazz musician, two of them. Uh, one I have records, the other escapes me, I don't have his records, but jazz pianist Onaje Alan Gooms passed away. And he plays piano on this album by Cecil McBee, Mutima. Jazz bassist uh, McBee. This is a fire, spiritual, intense date here. Uh, the players on here are kicking ass. Jimmy Hops. Uh, George Adams, uh, Alan Gooms, like I said, uh, good grief. And um, Onaja Alan Gooms, I have him on several things. Um, just, yeah, right here. This Lenny White album, Lenny White, the drummer who played uh, one of the drummers on Miles Davis's Bitches Brew. Lenny White from Return to Forever. This is one of his solo albums, Big City. And there's a there's a solo on one of these songs that always stood out to me. The the solo st st stood out to me. That was the thing about fusion and about prog is that you know you started to identify the different players' styles, you know, and so on. Here, like the different people when they take their solos, I recognize them like Herbie Hancock, Jan Hammer, and then the one where you Onaje Alan Gooms' "Dreams Come and Go Away." His acoustic piano solo on this album, on that track, always, it's one of my favorite parts of the album. 
Rest in peace, Onaji Alan Gooms. He's not a household name, but he's another great musician. So many great musicians that I'd like to tell you about. Just got done playing this, the Italian band no Nova Vimana, named after the uh, um, supposed ancient flying machines in India that they had, supposedly. There's supposedly diagrams of them, how they made them. Uh, this band grew out of the band Osana. This is Fusiono, and great lineup. I really like this ba album. Percy Jones on bass, Michael Walden on drums, uh, Phil Collins on percussion, plus, like I said, the uh, core of uh, Osana, the band Osana. Produced by Robin Lunley from Brand X. Good album, good album. I was, playing, I was pumping some Young Gods earlier, uh, a couple of remixes, Long Root, and then they do a song, uh, the September song, Kurt Vile song on here. Love this band, love this band. Played this um, side of this earlier too because Hal Wilner produced this, Gavin Friday who was in the band The Virgin Prunes, The Virgin Prune from Ireland. Uh, the Edge's brother, older brother, was the guitarist in The Virgin Prunes. Uh, I like The Virgin Prunes, still have some of the records. This, um, I like parts of it, um, but it really fits that it's a Hal Wilner production. They do eras of music on here, you know, like, like so Barroom Saloon, and it's like, Gavin Friday, who is quite a singer, and um, I think he's an actor. He sings like an actor, like he's acting. So it's like vignettes. It's like little plays. So this is actually rather good. There's a couple things in here where I thought, to okay, this is what I really like. Like, you take away the sun. Yeah, it was one that stood out to me. Gavin Friday, Man Caesar. Each man kills the thing he loves. I have a lot of techno, not a lot, but I do, and um, I get, it's hard to say who some of my favorites are. Ken Ishii, Ken Ishii comes to mind, but this is one I just pulled. Um, it's Par Grindvig. I like those Germans. I like the European sound. This is some Do Us Part mix. This is not that too, I don't like it too drill pounding. I, I like it when it shifts and creates patterns. Some of the stuff is too drilly for me, but that, that one's pretty good. Since I got my old stuff out, I can, I can access my classic rock albums now. And I love the Jefferson Airplane, Crown of Creation. I love this. Never got to see them, but I got to see the first version of Starship in concert, and that was cool. But I love this album, Lather, Triad, the title track, Ice Cream Phoenix. Love these guys, very psychedelic. Still has the uh, insert of this band, and then some jazz today. Stanley Cowell, pianist, Illusion. Sweet, the trio, with um, Stanley Clark on bass and Jimmy Hops on drums. This is just, today was a sunny day here in Omaha. I played this in the afternoon about 4 o'clock. It was perfect. This is an early ECM release, too, 1973. Acoustic piano, he does not play like, he, you won't say, oh, he's sounding like McCoy here, oh, he's sounding like Jared here. No, not at all. Stanley Cowell is his own thing and brilliant. And he's got an album called Brilliant Circles, which is one of my favorite jazz albums. Last thing on vinyl that's still sitting out, I can pull, well, I will pull it because I just played this. This is a very unusual album. This is a very unusual album. This is ahead of its time. Tony Williams' Lifetime, the, dra the jazz drummer. Tony Williams' Lifetime, Ego. This came out in 1971, and this is unusual. You know, he was still a very young man. You know, he was a teen 
when he's played with Miles. And so he is mixing his own very unique idea of what he thinks rock should be moving towards on this in this album. Jack Bruce is on here. And he has this guitarist on here that I've never heard anything else by, Ted Dunbar. And his playing on here is very distinct and really adds a lot to this album. Ego, Tony Williams' Lifetime. Excellent, excellent album. Yeah, one of my favorites. It's got a couple songs in there. It's like, oh, yeah. And I've had that since the 70s. So it's like it just takes me back. I love compilations, and I played this um, almost all the way through. Underground 70, the uh, CBS label, Columbia. This is the German pressing, 1970. And so it's got, um, that's Al Cooper on the label there. On the cover here, if you didn't recognize, that's Jerry Goodman, the violinist, who was in Mahavishnu Orchestra. But here it's when he's in the band The Flock. And The Flock has a track on here, as well as Chicago and... Al Cooper, Aorta is on here. This is a good one. This is um, this has got a very interesting um, and a couple of not so well-known bands on here. Who is it? Um, I said uh, Jacob's Creek. It's country, but it's like who the hell is Jacob's Creek? You know, whatever happened to them? They managed to get on this major label. Of course, this was back in the, look at the time, I'm going to let this go because it'll, it'll just upload overnight or however it takes. This was back in the halcyon days of money when they had money to burn and they would just, you know, throw it away. Oh, we think this is the next big thing. We'll sign them and maybe put it out, maybe not. And so all kinds of stuff got signed. Here is a psychedelic compilation box that I think someone sent to me. I don't think I bought this. It's called the Psych Box, and it's got four CDs of varying material. One, two, three, five, actually. Cleopatra is the label plus a one disc, you know, uh, and, and some fake LSD. This label, I, I appreciate the people sending this to me. One side of this is Timothy Leary talking about LSD, and the other side is credited to Jimmy Page, but it's him doing session work, and it's a really a rather dull track. That's what I was going to say about um, this particular company, and uh, if you work for Cleopatra, too bad, I'm going to tell the truth. Cleopatra um, seems to be one of those kind of companies that is good at gobbling up licensing and just sucking up stuff that's laying around, and what they'll do is they'll package good stuff with filler, so this is like, you'll be thinking, wow, five CDs of, of different stuff. And you look, and some of the some of the names are good, like Legendary Pink Dots, Nico is on here, um, Chrome. But then there's all this other crap is on here. I mean, no offense, but there are some artists on here I never heard of. And you can hear why. It's like, this is, this is really mediocre. But um, overall by skipping tracks, it's pretty good. So like this disc here, we have um, Nectar, Chocolate, Watch Band, and then a bunch of shit. Then now Crazy World of Arthur Brown, okay. So I was going through this um, two days ago. I appreciate all this stuff. I really do um, Hoover music. Okay, folks. We're gonna we're gonna get through this crazy period. I just this is so weird though, isn't it? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can still smile through this. I sure can. <coughs> mm hmm. For real. I mean, it's like yeah, you know, bullshit. It's the same old deal. Using wise mind. And just, just, just a Zen approach, a Zen approach, you know, what is, is, you know, stop grasping. What is, is, we'll, we'll get through this. <laughs> 